What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today of Ethereum and we're also going to get into some altcoins. So that's basically the main thing we're going to be looking at today is just those altcoins. I want to be able to get like five to ten of them in right in that range. Really want to drill down on some of these because what I believe is that fairly soon, guys, it still may be, you know, another month or so, whatever, but I do believe that we're going to get one of these beautiful altcoin cycles once people start really taking profit from Bitcoin and we get a nice healthy retracement. I believe some of that money is going to be going into the altcoins, and that's just my opinion, but a lot of these altcoins still are extremely undervalued, and we're going to go through some of these today. We're going to take a look at these. If you get some from this, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and also let me know down low. Are you more invested in Bitcoin? Are you more invested in altcoins? I really love to hear like what percentage, you know, if you could even break it down, say I'm in 10.10%, you know, altcoins, 90% Bitcoin or vice versa. I'd really love to hear what you guys are doing as well. Or if you're just trading and everything, it'd always be great to hear that. But let's dig into this, guys. Right now, Ethereum, we're going to be looking at this on the one day time frame. We're at $734. We're up 0.55%. What you can see right here is we're running into our next overhead resistance area that's at 745. We've had about three different days now that we've tried to break up through that. So today's candle right now, we're basically having a short day candle. And we're going to have to see if we can have a daily candle close up above that 745. If we can crack that, then I'd look up to around 805 is going to be the next overhead resistance area. Now, if we do start moving to the downside here, my downside target, I'd look for us to hold $660 is going to be the area that I'd look at for support. Right now, the RSI is at 68 on the one-day time frame, so not too crazy. As we've talked about before, you can get very overextended up into the 80s if we do want to continue this move for Ethereum in the shorter term. Stock right now is at 190. We have not had any type of downside cross or anything, so we're just going to see if we can get that daily candle close up above 745. That's going to be the ticket for us. Right now, I've been trading Ethereum on the one hour time frame, and I have an alert if Ethereum starts dropping to the downside down below that 722, then most likely I'd look to see if we could hit that $660 right in that range or even the bottom of this little channel that we've been in. You can see we had a daily candle close up above it, but we really didn't get that big massive follow through. We've had a lot of indecision once we had that daily candle close out of there. So we're gonna keep an eye on that if we get into the technicals for Ethereum. Right now we're sitting at a three cell, seven neutral, 18 buy. This on the one day time frame. oscillators, two cell, six neutral, and the three buy is what we're looking at there for Ethereum. So really keep those support and resistance areas on your radar. It's the best thing I can tell you for Ethereum right now, but long-term investors up above the 20, 50, 100, and 200 moving average. This is where you just want to sit back, be patient, and ride this trend. Really just ride these fluctuations out. So that's going to be Ethereum. The next one I wanted to get into is XRP. It's going to kind of work our way down through here. So guys, this is the importance of stop losses and risk management, not you know being diversified, not having all your eggs in one basket here. You can see XRP, what happens when some news breaks. I mean, obviously we can you know rocket this any coin to, to the moon or we can really drop off the face of a cliff. And this is what happened for XRP here. After we had this nice bullish and golfing candle, we were around $56, news came in. We dropped all the way down to 17 cents. Now what you can see is we've had a lot of climax volume selling to the downside, a lot of longer wicks down here. So I I still wouldn't be that shocked if we got a nice little move back up we'd have to get up through 0 0.23605 is going to be overhead resistance then be back around that 25 cents psychological which is also a big area here that we wanted to hold you can see all this consolidation moving sideways that's the spot we would have wanted to stay up above and we actually dropped a little bit lower than that but right now the rsi is at 30 you can see we're starting to get into that oversold territory and we're just going to have to see where this candle closes today and for me guys people can hate me for this i think xrp presents great trading opportunities but for me it's not one that i was ever long term invested in if that makes sense it just it, for me the the circulating supply was just way too much and it just i like trading it that's my thing just getting in and out of it using it as a trading tool that's what i like to do so that's going to be xrp guys really look at those areas like we said we want to continue to hold for support about 19 cents is going to be the main area we're going to be looking at there next what i want to get into is litecoin litecoin's at 126 right now yesterday what we were looking at was these long wicks at the top let me move this out of the way. So we had wicks at about 7% here. And what we were talking about was trying to hold as support that 122.49. We are still up above it, but I would still be cautious. You can see our relative strength starting to move to the downside. We're having some selling pressure. If we do lose this area, I'm going to look down to roughly about $111 is going to be the support area. See if we can get a bounce off that. 
Now, if we hold 122 as support where we're at today, even though we've had all these long wicks and profit taking up in that area, we'd look to see if we could get back up above 142. If we can get back above 142, then that really opens up the door up to 150, some of those higher levels. But we have to be aware that price has been making higher highs while the RSI has been making lower highs. Okay, we always want to be aware of that, and that could show that we could get one of these nice retracements, which we keep having. You can see these retracements here, retracements here, retracements here. Many times they're of 10 to 30%, and then we get moving back again to the upside. We're still up above our 20, 50, 100, and 200 moving average. So in the long term, looking really good for Litecoin right now. In the shorter term, we may get a little consolidation sideways where we may get a little bit more of that retracement. We're going to have to see if we can hold that 122.49 today. So that's going to be Litecoin, guys. Next one I wanted to get into here. Let's take a look at Bitcoin Cash, $352. Bitcoin Cash has been a tough area for it. We've hit this several times now. This is about the third time we've tried to get up through that $375. We seem to keep failing at that. So now what I'm looking at us to hold is $353 for support. If we can hold that as support, then we're going to have to challenge that $375. If we can't hold $353, we're going to look down to $318. And that's also going to correlate with the 20 EMA and that's going to be around $318 so we'd want to continue to hold that we have had some selling pressure up in this area but the nice thing is if we do finally get up above in the days and weeks to come 375 we could really have a nice shot at going back up to that $500 right up here relatively quick the last time we were at $500 was back in February let's see here that was February 6th 2020 was the last time we'd been up around that $500 for Bitcoin Cash. We want to continue to hold these higher lows coming in. If we take a look at the technicals for Bitcoin Cash, we have a two sell, eight neutral, 18 buy on the one day time frame. Oscillators, one sell, seven neutral, and a three buy. So you can still see we have all these little minor overhead resistances, but the main area I'd be targeting is up around that $500 for Bitcoin Cash. Still up above the 20, 50, 100, and 200 moving average. That's what you're looking for, just losing a little bit of strength up at that 375. So be aware of that. Let's keep cruising down through here, guys. If you get some from this, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll get into Dash, Dash next. We're sitting at 102. Main area for Dash that we want to continue to hold is going to be $100. Psychologically, that big round number, and that's also an area of resistance that we broke up through. We want to hold that as support today. So that's going to be the main area. If we drop lower than that, it would be down around $96 would be the next two support areas. In terms of overhead resistance, we're going to be looking up to 108.06. Is going to be overhead resistance and be 116.87. Yet again, look at these long wicks, guys. Whenever we get those, we get those deep sell offs many times and then we'll continue the move. But, the, you know, wicks at the bottom, wicks at the top, really long. A lot of the times they can tell you that there may be a lot of profit taking, there may be some retracement, or it may be a great buying opportunity if it's down like in this area here where we hit these tweezer bottoms and we had a nice move from roughly about $91. All the way up to 120. You know, those are moves that you can play if you know what you're doing. RSI right now is at 51. The stock is at 54 and 61. But you can see we're having a little bit of that lower high action here on the RSI. So let's just really keep an eye on those areas for Dash. Next one I want to get into is Link. It's kind of working our way down through here. On the one day time frame, we need to stay up above this 200 moving average. For the most part, we've been trading up above it the entire time. So we don't want to start having daily candle closes below. You can see we've had wicks below it, but we haven't had daily candle closes below it. So we need to hold $10.59 as support. In terms of overhead resistance, we're going to be looking up to around $12.06 is what we're looking for. The RSI is at 43. So we have had a nice little cool down here if this is the area where we want to find some support and finally get back moving to the upside. The stock is at 54 and 55, so just very neutral in that area. So the main thing I'd tell you is just really watch that 200 moving average, see how we respond and react to that. Okay, so that's going to be Link. Then let's see here. I want to get Tezos in. Tezos is at $2 right now. A little bit weaker than some of the other coins. You can see it's below our 20, our 50, our 100, and our 200. We've been trying to hold support at that 188. That's the critical support area for us right now. RSI is at 43. In terms of overhead resistance, we'd have to get back up above about 225. Main thing, we haven't really had great price action up above that 200 moving average. We've had some wicks up above it. We had a day or two where we're traded up above it, but we really have not held that yet. 
And in my opinion, not financial advice, I think this is one that's going to do really well once altcoins get really moving in the next altcoin cycle. I think Tezos is going to be a good performer down the road. So when I look at areas like this, you know, when it gets to that $2, whatnot, sometimes that could be a great spot to just slowly start building positions into things because we've really had a deep retracement. We went up from around $4.50 all the way down to that $1 146 just recently and we've been in that downtrend since about august 13th 2020 so it's been quite a long time now that we've just been getting pushed to the downside so i do believe just looking at this at some point down the road here tezos is going to have another day where we get one of these explosive moves and if we can get over top of four dollars and fifty cents down the road then we'd have those blue sky breakouts and things could get really exciting so i think it's just more being patient with tezos that's what i'm looking at and then let's see here if there's any other ones. If you like me covering Tezos, let me know down low, guys. And then we'll check out Theta's at $1.50 right now. We made a really nice move. We broke out through 78 cents. Since then, had a really strong move all the way up. Our high was around $1.84 right there. Had a little bit heavier selling pressure up in that area with those tweezer tops. So if we consolidate, that's a potential. Or if we get this nice little retracement here, I'd look back to about $1.16, see if we could find support. On the one day, though, we're up above our 20, 50, 100, and 200 moving average for Theta. So really nice move here. I remember talking about this when we were getting this rounded bottom here, and we ended up getting that nice explosive move so this is one guys i haven't played myself but i like keeping an eye on it for you all from time to time because it's hard in my opinion to find some good exchanges that are safe to play theta if you guys know any let me know down low okay that you're comfortable with different things like that then if we take a look at digibyte we're at 0 0.02690 we're up about six percent Main thing we were talking about last time for Digibyte, we wanted to stay up above these moving average, still up above the 20, 50, 100, and 200 moving average. Overhead resistance, we're trying to get back up above 0 0.02720. And then these long wicks here where we had a lot of profit taking. RSI is at 64 right now. Stock is at 80, excuse me, 89 and 91. So the main thing here, guys, if Digibyte can get a strong move, the main area up top we would have to break through would be 0 0.03802. So these are all the things that I want you to keep on your radar here. Look at those support resistance. Look at those candlestick patterns, the wicks. They can really help you out, guys. God bless each and every one of you. Take care, my friends.